I make almost as much in one month now as I used to make in a year when me and my wife first got together. Having a way to onboard people and clarity around what's the next step and what to expect, that kind of thing. Biggest takeaway for me is just a reminder as a, as a sales guy, pick up the phone. It's allocating time, prospecting. If you believe in your offers genuinely help people every day, you need this reminder, put a sticky note in front of your computer, do something. What's up everybody, I'm Adrian Boysell. And this is the 10K Apprenticeship Program Training. John and I uh, have known each other for a really long time and we wanted to do something special. I kind of brought this idea to him and said, hey, it's kind of what I have just through a lot of conversations with mentors and coaches and people that I have in my life and came up with this hairbrand idea to do a really neat program and help people get their first 10K a month. So with that being said, let me go ahead and just jump right into it. So that brings me to the first thing. What I did is I wrote the entire business plan for my graphic design and printing. And it's funny how when you write your plans down on paper and you're able to get an amazing amount of clarity, what that actually does for your confidence. When you can see it in writing, you can see the facts, you can see the numbers. So I wrote down my plan. I wrote down the who, the what, and the how. So who is it that I want to help? Who is it in the world that needs my services? And it's not just business owners, right? Let's get more specific than that. What's your background? Is it influencers, right? Bree helps a lot of influencers. Is it uh, small business owners who have brick and mortar businesses, right? I know John's done a lot of work in that space. Is it carpet cleaners? Is it home improvement companies? Is it service-based businesses? Just depending on who it is that you want to help the most, this is the important piece that you need to be, get very, very clear on. And one of my mentors, uh, Dan Klein, used to tell me that the, the riches are in the niches. So getting really clear about that who, it could be financial planners, it could be attorneys, it could be contractors, right? Just figure out who the person is. And even within the contracting space, you got HVAC, plumbing, roofing, insulation, windows. They have all these different verticals inside that space that you can go help. And you can become the master and the king of that specific category and that niche. So get really clear about that. And then what is it that you actually provide to them? What is the service that you're doing? What problem are you solving for them? Right, That's the biggest thing is what problem are you trying to solve in the marketplace? And so what I did that made me really unique, and this goes into the how, is I would had a brick and mortar store, right? Once I actually scaled my business up, and I'll show you guys here in a minute, I went from having a tiny little office, running ads on Craigslist, which is what I did to initially get some traction, asking for referrals, going out to the events and doing all this organic stuff that I'm gonna talk to you guys here about in a minute. Then I moved over to actually utilizing beyond my network and started actually having a retail store where people were driving by. Now, the last piece is your brand strategy. It comes down to three components, your story, your niche, and your image. Within your story, it's very similar to what you see there in step two of the first step is your what, your who, your what, and your how, but also you would need to think about your why. Why are you doing what you're doing for a living? Why is this important to you? Then inside of your niche, it's who are they? What are their needs? right? And who are they not? And this is a big piece that a lot of people miss is they don't do enough marketing to repel the types of people that they don't want to work with. And the last piece is your archetype. It's actually a philosophy created by Carl Jung. Then you have your, your mission statement, which is really key. It's something you want to be looking at on a regular basis. That's your driving statement of why you are in business and why you do what you do. And then the last piece is your core values. Is it integrity, don't just say customer service. You need to get more specific than that. But those are the three pillars of your brand strategy. And once you kind of have clarity around that, that gives your, your tone of voice and your entire personality as a brand, sight, sound, touch, smell, and taste. So my apprenticeship program, I want to get this out of the way as early as possible. My apprenticeship program is something I've talked about. Like I said, you can't buy this from me today. I'm not selling this today. This just I want you guys to know that this exists. And if you guys are interested in it, I'll put a link up on the page here. You're going to see you guys can apply for it. And if it's a fit, we'll jump on a call. And uh, we'll go from there. But the apprenticeship program is I will work with you for as long as it takes. I don't care if it takes six months, a year, two years. It doesn't matter how long it takes. My goal is to get you to that $10,000 a month. With that all being said, John, you want to jump in and share a little bit about you? So for those of you that don't know me, I have never been good at, at having a boss. So at age 17, uh, I had a trailer living behind this, uh, this house on the 40th Avenue and East 14th street in East Oakland, California, very, very safe neighborhood. <laughs> um, so, uh, I decided, you know what, I don't need school dropped out in the 11th grade. Um, the guy that I had been working at his auto parts store since I was 12, found out I was living, uh, in a trailer behind this place. And he said, no, you're going to come move in with me in Santa uh, I'm going to buy you a car. You're going back to school, uh, all that stuff. My reward to him, my my payback to him was to steal money from him for my drug habit, uh, July 21st, 1987 at 1235 in the afternoon. Not that I remember. 
he took it all away. He said, uh, uh, I'm going to, you know, you sure you don't want help? And so I accepted help, went to a drug, drug and alcohol rehabilitation center, got out, said, man, is there anything I can ever do to help you, to, to repay you? He said, yeah, keep your nose clean. Uh, literally. What do you think of when you think of a salesperson? In my definition back then, I called them scum. Um, it was it was just bad. Okay. But that was my my opinion of a salesperson. And so when Jay told me to go out and talk to to perfect strangers, I'm like, dude, I just got out of Heald Institute of Technology and I worked at Hewlett Packard as a computer tech. I don't talk to people just so we're clear. And he goes, well, you're going to need to learn how to do that if you're going to get somebody to buy a product or service from you. If you struggle with picking up the phone, with with taking a phone call, with, with, with talking to somebody, understand that is going to get in the way of you being successful in business. And so if that's you, I want to give you an exercise. Here, here's, a, here's a perfect exercise. Um, and I've given it to thousands of people and it works every time. I want you to get a three by five five card. And I want you to write down the following quote. And it goes like this. Selling equals service. Sell from honesty, integrity, and compassion. Selling is about leading. Selling is about moving people to action. But I will tell you this, when you're building your own business, you need to have some values in place, some things that you're, they're non-negotiable, right? Which is why we're like, we're not selling Jack here today. We're going to have to connect with these people because I, we have to like you, okay? We have to honestly believe we can help you. At the end of the day, it comes down to this. What's your dream and what's your goal? So Adrian, what do you got to say about that? All that? Now I've gone from not liking sales to loving sales. I think sales is one of the greatest things that you could possibly do as a business owner, as a CEO, as a, as a small business owner, especially, is being able to learn how to communicate. So you can see here, as you go up on that tier, it's just a numbers game. So that's what I did when I wrote my business plan originally for California printing. I was like, oh, cool. I need to make at least $250 a day. And so if my average ticket is $100, $100 or $150, I think it was like $100 at that time. That means I need to get at least two to three people every single day. Well, how many, how many conversations do I need to have in order to make two to three sales happen every single day consistently? And my a deal and agreement that I made with myself was I was going to get five deals a day. I was going to do whatever it took to get five deals. And I did that. I had to make, I think originally, if I go all the way back in my memory, it was about 50 phone calls a day. I was literally in the phone book, calling businesses straight out of the phone book, trying to make friends and just meet people. And that's what I do is I'm really good at just starting a conversation, getting to know somebody, making it about them, not about me. And then I say, Hey, sounds like that's something I could potentially help you with. Would you be interested in having a conversation about that around that and asking for permission, right? Permission-based selling, I think is a very undersold skill. So the next step is the action. So a lot of people will try to take control of the sales conversation and kind of bop you on the head and try to get you to lower your price. This is when you have to take the stick back and be like, no, this is what I'm worth. This is my value. And if you're not interested in working together, if you can't meet me where I'm at, then this is probably not a great fit. All right. Three ways to bring in sales without spending a dime in advertising. Like I mentioned in my first business, I didn't spend a dime in advertising. Didn't even know how to do advertising at that time. Everything was built off of referrals. So asking my friends, my colleagues, my people that I've done business with, people that I know, I have this new business. And I'm looking for some support. If you guys know anybody that could use X service, this is what I'm doing. The second one is community groups, using Facebook groups, Facebook groups to build your own Facebook group or to be a part of another Facebook group. And just go in there. And if you're an expert in your field, just go in there and add value. And then the last thing is everybody's got this in their hand. If you use your cell phone and you leverage this, this is all about leverage. That's the whole game of business and the game of sales is all about leverage is finding other people to go out there and share your story. If you give people a, a story to sell, it's going to make it a lot easier for them to go out and talk about you. But use text message marketing, use your phone, pick up the phone and start dialing people. With that, step three is grow. Now that you've got some money trickling in, you've stuck to your plan and you're doing those daily prospecting. Prospecting should be something that's built into your calendar on a daily basis, an hour a day. I don't care if it's only 10 minutes a day. Maintaining that client relationship and staying active with them is really, really important. And it could be as simple as a, as a weekly email, a daily email, uh, a, a newsletter, a Facebook post. Like there's so many different ways to keep that top of mind awareness of them and to make them not feel like you've kind of just disappeared um, that you can implement. And so that's 
another training for another day. So the takeaways, keep your business plan simple, create irresistible offers to solve a problem, right? Relationships are worth more than money. That is a big one. I hope you guys took away from this. Corey Bacon, I wanted to ask him, what was that percentage increase from the time you, you and I started working together, mentoring and stuff? 36,000%. Taking it to the next level, I've been able to, I went from then doing by a project. Now I do an hourly rate. I've raised my rate up to $50. I'm getting ready to raise it up to $75. And now it's actually something I've been talking about with Amanda and Adrian. Now I've been working on doing more value-based pricing. I've got another mentor that's been helping me with value-based pricing. Um, right now I'm working with a client where I'm basically rebranding and helping them. And it's getting me $50 an hour. And in reality, I know that I could probably end up doing the job for, I'd say, four times what I'm making now. And he probably still would have jumped at it. So there's still so much growth potential and I've already almost reached that 10 grand. I was looking at it earlier today and I was at 7,600 and uh, you know, I make almost as much in one month now as I used to make in a year when me and my wife first got together. So there's that, but I want to end on the part that's most important to me, which is the people that have are here in this room that I want to help and support and, and work with. I want to hear some of your guys' biggest takeaways. Um, and I'll just kind of go down my list of people that I have here in the call. I'll just call on you if you guys are open and available for that. But, uh, I want to, I'm curious to, to hear what Bree's biggest takeaway is so far. I, I have a lot, actually, I have like wrote down like three or four pages of stuff in here. People come up when they would not like the price, right? They'd be like, I don't like the price of this. It's why, why you charge so much for this? It is what it is. And they're not, you're not my customer. Like, I don't say that to them, but like, know that they're just not your customer. Like, it's Okay. They're not all going to be your customers. So hold on fast to that, like that knowledge of your value and what you're offering is worth it, what it's worth. I think um, it's something that we find, I've always found difficult to do, but when it came to my soap business, I was like, oh no, I know what all goes into this and I know it's worth every penny. It should be more. That's right. <laughs> so, That's exactly right. That was one of my biggest ones that I took away today. Yeah, it was really good. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I want to pick on Kevin because he's up here at the top on the right. What about you, Kev? I think for me, the the thing I'm looking at was getting clear on my brand experience, like getting crystal clear around. I mean, I, I can get to be clear who my customer is, but the brand experience is something that I'm not sure that I've done a great job of uh, thinking through and having a clear plan of action on what that looks like and how the follow-up looks and all the pieces that go with a brand experience. Yeah, that's where they go out and talk about you. That's where you give them that story to tell that, that's going to spread your stuff like wildfire. Right. And I think I've, I kind of know in the back of my head how important it is. It also, I think, uh, helps avoid um, purchase reluctance. What's There's a term here that I'm missing. Um, buyer's remorse. Buyer's remorse. There you go. Yep. Right. Having a way to onboard people and clarity around what's the next step and what to experience, what to expect, that kind of thing. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Kev. All right. Uh, I'm going to pick on Eric. Yeah. Hey, Adrian. So I think, um, you know, there were some good takeaways just around, um, you know, the brand messaging. Um, I think, you know, the just being able to kind of get out there, figure out who, you know, the ICP is, messaging that's going to resonate with them, um, being authentic in, in the market, going out kind of the, the some of the different ways that you mentioned. Um, you can create kind of the audience or the following so it was, you know, some of that was interesting. And, you know, frankly, I'm just, I'm just here to listen. My, my wife is um, embarking in a, in a business and she has a product that's kind of in a pre-launch phase. So I'm just trying to kind of listen for, you know, folks that we could potentially partner with that would help us to really go to market with that. I think there's some areas that we're lacking in um, just around some of the marketing execution. Branding's already been done. There's a lot that's already been done. The product's created. It's just, you know, uh, trying to figure out different strategies and, and potential partnerships that can help us to, to go to market with this and grow it from zero to, you know, the sky. Right. Uh, thanks, man. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate you and John spending the time today and sure. just getting us acquainted with, with, uh, who, who you guys are, what yeah. you're doing and what you're bringing to the market. And, um, awesome. I definitely will take advantage of, of setting up a one-on-one a -on -one conversation with you, Adrian. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Eric. Thanks. All right. Let me uh, let me pick on Peter. He's got his logo up in there. I think it's pretty cool. Biggest takeaway for me is just a reminder as a as a sales guy um, to pick up the phone. Um, you know, it's allocating time, prospecting, and and I think I've I've been guilty of it just as much as anybody else. You know, you 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 
you have some business and, you know, you, you work that business until it's, you know, dead, you know, and, and it's over. And, and now it's like, well, now what? And it's like, well, if I would have just, you know, kept the, kept the train rolling uh, this right. whole time, I wouldn't have that problem. So it's, for me, it was that reminder because I mean, as a sales guy, you hear that time and time again, but um, you know, huh. it's gotta, it's, it's, it's gotta keep, you know, it's gotta keep fresh that, that, that same talk. Um, sales so, contact anyway. sport, man. It's contact yeah. It's a contact sport. sport. That's and, true. Um, yeah. So if you believe in your offers genuinely help people every day, you need this reminder, put a sticky note in front of your computer, do something. Got to go yeah. out there every single day and make more offers. And you kind of spark something with that, with that whole idea that you shared there. I'm wondering if it would be cool to have like a Facebook group or some sort of group chat. Um, that could be a really fun idea just for some accountability and motivation. Because when you do life with people, when you're working with other people, yep. there's just an energy that you feed off of that helps so much. Like when I, when I work solo here in my office by myself versus when I'm with a group full of people, it's just night and day difference. So that might be something fun that we could do together for those of you guys that are here, that are interested in that on the sales side to kind of really level things up. All right. Uh, just for the sake of time, thank you for sharing, Peter. Appreciate that. I'm going to jump over to Singh. Hello. Uh, thanks for inviting me, Adrian, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think my biggest takeaway was like a reminder of actually like uh, following up on the people who referred you to other people to like keep them in the loop of what's going on and how that's been going and how that relationship has been uh, established and stuff. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's pretty important. Absolutely. That's huge. Cool. Thank you for sharing. What's up, Robbie? Something that I took away from this that um, is something that I've personally been trying to work on a little harder is uh, those um, three objections. So the um, identifying what the objection is, is it the price? Is it the uh, person? Is it the product? And then identifying right. how to solve that solution or how to yep. find that solution rather. That was a big one for me. That was like one of my biggest ones early on selling yeah. cell phones. He's like, there's only three people why they're not going to buy from you. They don't like the, what you're trying to sell them. They don't like you or they don't like the price. And I'm like, okay, well, we got to, we got to figure out which one of those are and then dive into it. Is it really a financial issue or is it, they just don't see the value in it. Right. Is yeah. it really me or is it the way that I'm coming across and maybe the way I'm communicating, I could communicate better. Or is it, it's just, I'm selling them a product. They, they came in for an SUV, but I'm trying to sell them a Saturn, you know, like a little, yeah. little, little coupe. Right. So being able to narrow that down is that was a really big deal for me. That's that's I've taken with me for the last 17, 18 years now. So awesome. Awesome, dude. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing. Yep. Awesome. Um, all right. Let's jump over to Martin and Amanda. Yep. Cool. I'll jump in real quick. I typed mine in the thing, but the idea of having the note card and putting on it selling equal service and all the rest of the things. Um, that were mentioned, selling from honesty, integrity, passion. I think having that is really helpful for me because I hate doing any type of sales. <laughs> Adrian knows I've always hated it. So looking at it from a different perspective and reminding myself of that all the time and having that by me when I'm making my calls, I think will be helpful to get me started at least. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks for being here too. That's awesome. For sure. Um, all right, Martin, you're last up. Everybody needs a feasible point A to point B. Um, most people are driving in circles in their life and their in their business and all this stuff. And um, I did that for about 10 years. And, um, you know, it, it oftentimes looks like cycles, right? And the reason you see it going in circles and cycles like that is because there ha there's not a catalyst that's been you know, uh, ran into the side of it yet. Right. And for right. different people, that's different things, but for most people, especially in the agency space, um, having somebody to, uh, handhold them basically like it's what you've done. Uh, I've seen it in my own, with my own eyes, um, you know, like handhold somebody, uh, to get things done, uh, is the shortcut, uh, everybody needs. Um, yeah. So basically having the SOPs, the what not to do is, is what uh, came to mind when you were closing a minute ago. It's like, dude, just knowing the what not to do is, is like, that's the Don't game. step there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like keep it in between these two lines, bro. Yeah. Like, that's the narrow. And that's kind of what, uh, what I garnered off of what you guys were talking about. It's like, you know, if you ever just wanted to, to 
um, have a clear cut map to get there, this would be it, right? Um, exactly. You know, so that's that's basically what I took away from it was that uh, it was just save a lot of time. Was this valuable? Should we do this again? Absolutely. Well, have a great day, guys. Have a good rest of your week. Crush it. Keep looking up.